What's going on guys? So this is Master Grid Hazel, this is a big old box, and this is a pretty late Master Grid Monday. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so this Master Grade Monday, we're finally taking a look at the P Bandai Gundam TR1 Hazel Custom. And technically that's the RX-121, you just can't see it behind his own foot there. And of course we did the unboxing of this last go around, and you get the nice box art right here, which is essentially just a photo of the kit itself, and P Bandai arised by adding an effect or two. You got Master Grade logo up there. You've got the Advance of Zeta logo right there. You've got some exploding stuff happening down here, along with the Bandai logo. You got Bandai 2017 made in Japan. And of course, P Bandai boxes are easy because you got RX 1211, Gundam TR1 Hazel Custom, Titan Sports Art Mobile Suit. Come on this side, you got repeat of the top box art, and it says Bandai Hobbit on that, as it should. Look at that. That's pretty. And you got 121 Gundam TR1 Hazel Custom, all that stuff. Come down here, you got to read the instructions. You got all the types of plastics. You got the 0 to 3 year olds will be unhappy. And somewhere in here, you've got a warning about not sticking a hazel on a 3 year old's face. You got 4,500 yen. <laughs> yeah, it didn't cost that. Um, and let's see here. I don't believe we get an artist. Not really, because it is just CG works anyways. So, what to do? You know, here's a lot of noise going on inside the box. So, P Bandai box still upside down. Yay for that! And we are going back to having the great old build montage. So, let's kick that off. <laughs>
All right, guys, so here we have the hazel all done and done and looking really, really beefy. This guy is a hefty kit, and I don't just mean that construction-wise. I mean, he's got some real weight to him. I think each one of the legs maybe weighs an ounce or so. You know, it, there's, there's quite a bit of plastic to this guy. And if you're familiar with a Mark II build, especially the Mark II 2.0 build, uh, very similar in a lot of that construction, especially with the legs, which are almost identical interior-wise, and then even some of the upper body is also very, very similar. And, yeah. This was a surprisingly enjoyable build. I really liked it, and the more it came together, the more it made me happy. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, because I've, I've done the HD Hazel before, which I have handy, of course, for comparison. So you can see the size difference, obviously. Um, and yeah, I liked this build. And oddly enough, a lot of the things you have to do to this guy, you have to do to this guy. Especially paint-wise. And we'll cover that here in a minute on details. But for the most part, I really do dig this thing. I like the not quite pure white. It's very good. Um, it does have a few stickers here and there. So he's got a foil sticker right here on the chest for the chest camera. The face, of course, you got the eye stickers right in there. Where's my autofocus? There we go. Uh, you do get, you don't get a sticker, but you get the clear green for the top of the head. I did try to put a foil sticker inside there and uh, failed somewhat miserably. You do also get a green sticker right here for the shield booster mount. You do get green foil stickers down here in the cameras near the ankles. Because that's a thing. Uh, also, in the back of the backpack, big foil sticker there. So, giant thing. As for paint and things you need to do, you can use the black stickers that came for all of these thrusters. But I used uh, black paint instead. Just regular black Gundam marker. Inside the thrusters here, I did what I could to try to match the orange. You can see it's way more orange than it should be and not the best paint job. So I'll probably clean that up later on, but it doesn't look too terrible at a glance. All of the thrusters got some of my favorite dark gray ever inside them, like so. Except for those, which were obviously black, even there on the side there. And then even these little nodules here on the knees got some gray paint. Same thing as the one on the chest. I missed this part right here. Coat totally, totally forgot about that one. So I'll probably go back and do that later. Or maybe not at all. We'll see. Um, another cool detail. Doesn't really fit into anything. He actually has an opening cockpit. So you grab the front section. It's on kind of a slider slash hinge. Comes at a red part in here. And try to pull it down. As best you can. Come on. Need a tool of some sort. Here we go. And there you got an opening cockpit. And it does come with a pilot figure that you can put in there. Of course, I didn't. Didn't know what to paint him, so I just didn't want to bother to put it in there. To be totally honest with you guys, you know, I don't really care for the pilots that much. So... It is what it is. Now, one thing he definitely is no, not short of is water slides. So you get all the Titans logos here on the shoulder, there, all the Titan test team logos all over everywhere like that. And, of course, you get the ones that are on the butt skirt, especially this one here that wraps around. Now, guys, you guys know I absolutely hate doing water slides. I actually wasn't considering doing these until I picked up some Microsol and Microset. That made it so much easier these are the cleanest water slides i've done period even after using the mark setter and mark softer uh from mr color this is way way better you can see that this sticker itself or this water slide is melted into that little groove there it's melted well around the corners and then whenever we get into the accessories here in a minute you'll see even better stuff than that oh and this is really funny because the caution stickers down here and then even the little ones kind of around, they weren't in the instructions on where to put them. So I just assumed near the large thrusters would be these. <laughs> I totally guessed right. That's funny. Um, 
I kind of hate that these thrusters don't get any kind of color. They're just there. They're just gray, but you don't have to paint them. So that's always a good thing. Did have to paint inside these just to make it look good. Did have to paint the fingertips red. You can see that it's just red Gundam marker. Uh, potentially not 100% dry as well. So I'm going to be very careful. So I don't end up with more red paint on my hand than I already have. Um, the only other troublesome thing is this stupid V-Fin sticker. It's terrible. They've engineered better ones. And, you know, it's too late now to go back and paint it. So I'm just going to live with it forever. So it is what it is. Now let's go ahead and do accessories right quick. First and foremost, you get his little machine gun or rifle, whatever you want to call it. It looks just like it did on the HG. I did not add any paint to it or anything like that, but you do get a cool green clear piece here for the camera. And it actually does tuck away for it. Oh, hello. I guess, oh, my fingers are slick. Storage mode. Now you'll notice there's something missing, and it is the extra handle. Um, I kind of forgot to put that in while I was constructing it, and um, literally just couldn't get this guy apart after the fact. So it is what it is. And he does hold it, just like any of these 2.0 hands do. So you can kind of go work around it because I'm trying to be careful of the paint. Work it through the fingers, into the palm, get the trigger finger lined up, line up the peg that's in the palm, and just close the fingers. And he holds it nice and handily. It's very good. And he does actually have weapon storage. We'll talk about that in just a second because, of course, he comes with the spare ammo cartridges or magazines, whatever you want to call them. And you build these things uh, in mirror to each other and they have the little peg sticking out the back so they can mount on the side skirts. And one of them, and I think it's that one, fits way better than the other because one of them is super loose. Yeah, it's definitely this one. Peg probably needs to be beefed up just a little bit. But what's really cool, you want to pull that off. And you want to pull the gun out of his hand very carefully. You have that peg right there that you can actually push through, which is really neat. So you can push it out the other side if you really want to. Push it back. And you get some handy dandy weapon storage. Just kind of also plug that into his waist. You go you guys know me. I love me some weapon storage. Now he does come with his standard shield, but first you're going to need the shield mount, and this does plug into his arm. This thing is very much like an HG thing. I don't think I've seen this much on MGs, but you guys know my MG experience with the uh, UC is pretty limited. So you get his big old shield, like so, and I did something I said I wouldn't do, and I used the giant Titans trial mobile suit team, the big TR uh, sticker there. And once again, this is a thing that you can tell the Microsoft Microset definitely came in handy. If I had used the um, Mark Set or Mark Softer, this would not have come out. So cut it to shape because you had to cut that little edge off so that would fit there. Put on the Micro Set first. Applied the, the water slide like you do with it wet. Applied more Micro Set over the top of it. And then stretched it out because this is a curved surface. That's not a curved sticker. Stretched it out as best I could. Wicked away the extra fluid as best I could. And then there were little bitty wrinkles kind of all over the place. And you can still see remnants of some of them, but they were way worse. So after it was mostly dry, I took uh, Microsol to it and just laid it out over it and let it dry. And yeah it made a huge difference it definitely melted this uh water slide to the surface and then later on it still had some wrinkles you can see little they almost look like cracks right through there those were way worse so what i did is i went back over it again with another coat of microsoft to try to brush those out very very gently and let it dry again and this was the results and i am absolutely impressed so i've been told about those from many different people and it's the first time I tried using it. Now, the way the shield mounts is this little guy right here will slide into this. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it works. And it looks good. Big, big old hefty shield. 
and you can mount it there to the side it does rotate you can also mount it around the back of the arm if you don't want to have it on the side arm so that's that no, yeah real easy he also has his beam saber which i totally left on here just a nice little beam saber got a little antenna on the end of it for some reason nothing special he comes with two blades but you only need the one so that's that looks pretty good of course he can hold it just the same way you hold anything line up your slot and your hole or slot and your peg and he totally grips it as he should looks very nice now he does have these thingies and i don't know what they are but they pop up like this on this little ball joint like so one on either side they're similar to beam savers they even have a big hole there but as far as i know i don't know that they are beam savers somebody let me know in the comments down below i assume the jet fire will probably try to tell me about that <laughs> oh by the way i didn't even think about it i had to paint inside those little vents on the sides of the head now of course being the hazel he does have one really big weapon we've yet to look at, and it is the Shield Booster. Look at this thing. It's huge. And yes, I do know that there are P-Bandai, like a twin pack, so that you can have three of them on a single kit, and uh, that might end up happening in my in my collection. So it looks pretty good. It's nice and layered. You got the big navy part here. You got the big white part here. It sandwiches from the back. You actually have a standard shield mount, so he can totally mount it on a normal shield. He also has this big peg back here, which is how you attach it normally. Now, the Titans Test Team logo right there was applied the same way this was. I actually had problems. The micro set didn't catch it the first go-round. So once I laid it in place, I let it nearly get dry, and you could see some uh, kind of crazing happening on it where it just didn't stick down. So I hit it with a little more micro set over the top, and then wicked away the excess and let it dry. And then it still didn't get 100%, so I hit it with Microsol again. A good hefty coat of Microsol, and I let it set, and it really cleaned it up. I mean, look how good that is. That's actually very, very nice. And then I added the third Caution logo back there because that is the only other big thruster he has. Also painted gray inside. That was a pain in the butt because I did that after it was assembled. So, the, and the uh, little bit right up here also needed to be painted yellow. I caught that last minute. That was literally the last thing I've done prior to this review. Now, it does mount up here on the top of the backpack. So, what you want to do is grab this, hinge it back, and you can see he's got a big square peg there. And you can either remove the shield mount part or leave it in. I like to leave it in because you can hook it on there and then, oops, sorry, I forgot the peg wasn't down. I like to hook it around the front and then insert the square peg. And then there is your shield booster mounted onto your big old hazel dude. And he looks awesome. That is a beautiful, beautiful, big, bulky Gundam. So nice. Look at that guy. Yeah. And just real quick before we get into articulation and stuff, I wanted to see the two of them side by side. And they do look really, really nice. <laughs> the fact that it took this long to get a MG version of a Hazel is crazy. And yeah, the Advanced Hazel, and I don't, I don't think I'm going to get the Titans Colored Hazel. I think that's not really worth the money. But the Advanced Hazel, definitely going to be worth it. So let's go ahead and get into articulation real quick. Okay, so we'll start on the shield booster because it does have articulation there. And, well, it's going to come in handy if we do. So it can tilt forward and back. So you can totally do his, like, hat mode. <laughs> or you can go full on back for his thrusters. But if you pull it out on this very scary slider, you can get it straight. So that will really put it into its booster mode. So you can really just... Take off. And then actually that gives you a little bit more range. But it is what it is. I like that. I dig it. I'm going to go ahead and remove that, at least for the time being. Give myself a little bit less to move around. Now the head is on a hinged ball joint. So it can 
turkey neck with the finest. He can look down that far, he can look up that far. If you're careful, just watching the chin, you can go all the way around. Which, by the way, I really appreciate the incredibly beefed up head on this guy. Look at that. And uh, being that this is based off the Mark II, which I really was not a fan of, uh, the fact that they made changes to this kit that make it look a little bit better and a little less cartoony really uh, changes the game, in my opinion, when it comes to a Mark II-based kit. Now, the shoulders do rotate all the way around. You get a little flip-flop in the shoulder armor. You can get it out to about 90 degrees. You can rotate at the biceps like you should. You have a very nice double-jointed elbow, so that can give you an okay high teacher. It's not going very high, but it does work. And previously stated, the double jointed elbows can fold the arm in very, very tightly. If I fold away this thumb, straighten it out, it will fold a full 180. And that's actually very, very good. And I believe the arm joints and all that are actually brand new. They're not 2.0 based. Um, they're Titan. They're, I'm sorry, they're, uh, they're hazel based. The hands are 2.0 hands, as you know. So bottom three are tied together. The trigger finger is by itself. You do get the hinge at the wrist by itself. And rotating joint in the pivot at the actual base of the hand. Now for the waist, he doesn't really get any ab crunch. He can rotate. He can tilt. Just got to be careful just with the way it works. Um, it should ab crunch, or maybe that's just for the cockpit going away. Looks like I can go back a little. Oop. Just knocked the thruster off the back. Those are ball jointed mounted, so that's nice and easy. Okay, so the hip skirts flip up. Front skirts are separate ball jointed skirts, so once again, that's how you should always do yours. There are some hidden thrusters right inside there. That's pretty cool. The Hips are on T-mounted ball joints, but you can do the thing where you slide them forward for whatever reason that you need to. Um, it does give you some different posability. So with the hips slid forward, you can kick the knees almost totally straight out, limited by the skirt. Can't go back as far because the back skirt doesn't move. Does rotate at the thighs. Don't believe it'll go all the way around. I think it's just limited. No, it can if you move it out. Okay. Now, the cool thing is, because of the way this is based off the 2.0 frame, you get a lot of supplemental movement when it comes to the armor and stuff. So, watch right here on the thigh. And it pops open, and it slides down. But you can also see right here, behind the knee armor, you get a secondary knee armor that comes up. That's really awesome. And it is a double-jointed knee. The, the top joint isn't spectacular, but the bottom joint is doing all the work. So that gets you better than 90. So that's actually very, very good. Gotta love that. And of course, no 2.0 frame would be incomplete, or would be complete without, I should say, the pistons. So you get the working pistons right there. Got a little bit of that favorite new gold on the tips there, and the chrome marker on the actual piston shafts. They move pretty good. The ankle armor does pivot like it should, and you get ball joint mounted ankle, can tilt down, can tilt up, can rotate a little bit, and the front of the foot can pivot, but only so far. The heel doesn't move as far as I can tell, or maybe the heel does. The heel should move individually, at least a little. Yeah, it does move just a bit. But very decent possibility out of the feet. I mean, he's a big, chunky dude. He's actually probably not going to be walking around much. He's probably going to be flying around in space more often than not. Now, I would definitely be careful with the hips because the just big ball or the big T-mount ball joint nature of them makes it a little wonky. You just got to be careful how you're playing with things sometimes. And the large heavy backpack does make it a little awkward to balance him, so he kind of wants to tip over a little bit every now and then. And with no real heel spur or anything like that, you just got to be careful. Now, you can put him on an action base, but you'll have to use one of the prong or the fork types 
that will actually come right in here and rest in the crotch and uh, basically um, goes around the, uh, the actual hip joint. And that's not the best way to do it, in my opinion. I, th I think that they could have given it a much better, much better method. You know, they could have easily given it a backpack. Could have given it a hole right back here to plug the stand in, something like that. Or just engineer it straight into the crotch, as they should have. But that's it for this part. Let's go on to final thoughts. All right, guys. So for final thoughts, um, if you can get this guy for a reasonable price, get it. It is absolutely worth it. The rest of the Hazels, whenever they come out, that'll be really, really fun. Especially if you get one in the Titans color. Not necessarily the TR1 in the Titans color, but maybe the uh, the the Advanced Hazel that's coming. I definitely want that one because it comes with so much stuff. But I really like it. I really enjoyed the build. Made me up my game with the water slides, which I'm going to be applying to a lot more things from now on if I can uh, continue to use these Microsoft micro set the same way. But it's fun, it's chunky, it's a great, great build. Some fun engineering, even in the old Mark II uh, frame and stuff like that. And yeah, this guy it runs in like 90 bucks usually. I think you can probably find it on some places for about 75 or thereabouts. Which, if you can get it at that price, definitely, definitely worth it. Because of how much stuff you get. And yeah, you get leftover uh, runners and stuff like that that you're probably never going to use, but it is what it is. I also didn't really point out the extra caution stickers here on the shoulders, but um, definitely one of my favorite Master Grade builds so far. I really like it. It's so hefty. Like, I mean, it is, it is a good clunky figure. <laughs> and, you know, because I've done the HD version and I need to do the other HD guys too, um, it definitely inspires me to do a lot more with this. But that being said, guys, that's going to be the end of this Master Grade Monday. I want to thank my patrons as usual, John, Andy, Steve, Colby, and the Crow Sama. You guys are great. If you want to become a patron here today, check it out right here on the screen. Also, if you want to help support the channel in other ways and get maybe some cool merch, you can have some Shoki shirts right here on the screen, along with some other stuff. And until the end of May, all proceeds, both from the regular contest and the regular t-shirt sales, are all going for the Lupus for Lupus charity, which if you need to know about it, right up here in the corner, running out of time on the getting those submissions in, guys. You got till the 20th, so if you're just not hearing about it and you want to participate by all means go over there and check that out i'll catch you guys on the next review and remember as always keep on building